one of the most prominent unsolved mysteries in Japan. Two women living in Kyoto head into a local mountain to pick wild vegetables. A couple of days later, their lifeless bodies are found, with countless signs of blunt force trauma and stab wounds. One of them still had the knife sticking out of her. A piece of paper is found in one of the women's pockets, with a hastily written memo. I am being chased. Please help. This man is a bad man. This is the story of the Bracken Picker incident. The story takes place in Nagaoka Kyo City, located in the Kyoto Prefecture. On May 23, 1979, a couple of women working at a local supermarket, Mizuno Keiko, age 32, and Akashi Eiko, age 43, had just clocked out of their morning shift at 10 am. The pair bought bento boxes for lunch and head off on their bicycles to a nearby mountain to pick bracken. Bracken, also known as eagle fern, is an edible wild vegetable that can be found during spring and early summer. At around 11 am, Mizuno and Akashi park their bicycles at a nearby temple located on the foot of the mountain and disappear into the woods. Later that day, Mizuno was supposed to pick her child up from daycare but did not show up. Nor did she return home that night. Her husband, recalling Mizuno mentioning she had plans to go bracken picking, goes to look for her, but finds nothing. The next day, May 24th, Mizuno's husband again goes out searching for his missing wife, this time accompanied by Akashi's husband, whose wife also had not come home the previous day. They look around the local mountain for several hours, but could find no trace of their wives. At 2 45 pm, they file a report to the police. The police immediately gather 30 men and begin the search. They find the two women's bicycles at the temple, but nothing else for that day. On May 25th, the police ramp up their efforts, with over 100 men and police dogs combing through the area. Sometime around noon, they find the lifeless bodies of the two women near the summit of the mountain. It was obvious that they had been killed. In a brutal fashion. Akashi had more than 30 wounds from blunt force trauma, nine ribs broken, and a ruptured liver. Her ultimate cause of death was asphyxiation from being strangled. Mizuno had over 50 stab wounds, some of them deep enough to penetrate her heart and lungs. The knife was still stuck in her body when the police found her. Both women had signs of assault. Interestingly, The Achilles tendons on both of the women had been severed, as if to prevent them from running away. In their backpacks, they both had bracken and empty bento boxes, indicating they had been attacked after lunch. An autopsy would later reveal they were killed within an hour of consuming food. Their wallets were also found with money inside, so the culprit wasn't after their money or valuables. The piece of evidence that made this case so infamous is this memo, written on the back of a receipt from the supermarket the two women were employed at. In rough handwriting, it read I am being chased. Please help. This man is a bad man. Handwriting analysis would reveal this memo was written by Akashi. She may have written this memo to drop it somewhere while running away, but never managed to escape the scene. The fact that Akashi could write this memo suggests that there was only one offender. If there had been two or more, one would probably have kept watch on her. The police found a few strands of hair, revealing the culprit to have a blood type of O. Footprints found on scene indicated a large, heavy scent man. This man might have been trained in combat or some form of martial art, strong enough to crack bones and destroy organs with his bare hands. A few men would come up as suspects in the following investigations. The first was Mizuno's husband. He had been the beneficiary of a life insurance contract set on Mizuno, and had used the proceeds from that insurance to purchase cars and other luxury items in a short time span after her death. However, the police never found any concrete evidence pointing to him being the culprit, and he didn't match the profile of being a large, heavy set man. Next, There were a couple of local delinquents in their late 20s who had been seen running out of the mountains on the afternoon of May 23rd. They had a past of causing trouble, 
and had been taken into custody multiple times for assault and picking fights. One of them was a practitioner of karate. They worked at the same construction company and were known to be rather lazy on the job, but both of them suddenly improved their attitude towards work after the day of the incident. But these two men had been working at a construction site that day, so were unlikely to have been involved. Whoever claimed to have seen them running off the mountain might have mistook someone else to be these two young men. The final suspect was a man who was sometimes seen wandering the area with a knife in hand. The previous year, 1978, a woman had been approached by this man and was asked, Hello, have you found any bracken? The police created a portrait of this man from the woman's memory and released it to the public, but they never tracked him down. With no other leads or evidence, the culprit was never found. But wait, the story doesn't end here. Five years from the incident, another murder took place in the same city. A woman by the name of Kinoshita Kyoko was stabbed in the neck and back dozens of times, wrapped in a blanket, and burned to the ground along with her house, where her body was found. It was then revealed that Kinoshita had been previously working at the same supermarket as Mizuno and Akashi, and had gone with them to pick Bracken on the day of their murders. It just so happens that Kinoshita had headed home before lunch, and therefore did not run into whoever killed the other two women. The police had kept her involvement a secret, because they were worried the culprit would hunt her down as a possible witness. The murderer was never found for Kinoshita's death, but evidence suggested that the culprit was a man with a blood type of O, the same blood type as whoever killed Mizuno and Akashi. Although there was no clear connection between the two cases, it seems too much to be pure coincidence. The way Kinoshita was killed wasn't as if a home burglar had randomly run into her. Being stabbed dozens of times, wrapped in a blanket and set on fire, indicates this was a planned killing with a strong motive. This becomes creepier the more you think about it. If the three women had indeed been killed by the same person, it means the killer didn't randomly run into Mizuno and Akashi in the forest. He was aware Kinoshita was supposed to be there as well, suggesting his original intention might have been to kill all three of them. The fact that he was able to locate Kinoshita, even though the police kept her existence a secret, means the killer had the skills and resources to track her down with limited information. Or he might have known the three women personally. Also, remember how the two women had their Achilles tendons severed to prevent them from running away. The average person wouldn't think of doing that, so was the killer some kind of professional? Why were these women targeted? Had they seen something they shouldn't have in the forest that day, and were silenced as a result? Or were they somehow involved with the wrong people, who saw the bracken picking trip as an opportunity to dispose of them? We will never know. What do you think of the case? Let me know in the comments below. I recently set up a Patreon. A lot of my videos get demonetized because they have to do with crime, so it would be greatly appreciated if you could support the channel. I'll leave a link in the description. As always, thank you for watching until the end. Please like, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you don't miss the next episode. I'll see you next time.